for God's people, I bring you another greeting from Soldier of the Cross. As I told you last week that we are beginning a new series caption, Prepare for War. Wake the mighty men. And as I said, this series is going to challenge you to become a soldier of the cross. A warrior in God's hand. Because where we are today, the Lord is waking up the nations. We need to wake up and fight for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for today, for the opportunity to sit under your feet. Please speak to us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. When you go to war, or today I'm speaking on a subject, when you go out to battle. When you go out to battle, what are you going to do? Sometimes when you go out with your friends and all that, you meet colleagues and somebody who is stronger and can bully you. And he say, you meet me here and let us fight and see who is who. So when you go out to battle, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1, the Bible says when you go out to battle against your enemies, and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you. Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you. And who brought you up from the land of Egypt? So people of God, when you go out to battle, when you go out to war, when you go out to fight all the spiritual fight, all the spiritual battle, the Lord expects you to do something. You may see that the enemy may come by force. There are so many surprises that may come on your way. But the Lord says, remember, I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. So you shouldn't fear. Don't fear them. Go out and fight. Go out and battle. Go out and challenge them because the Lord is on your side. People of God, a spiritual warrior must first establish his heart before God. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, God lays down the conditions for being a warrior in his service. So everything was positioned in the sight of God. And in between exhortations to courage in verses 1 and verses 8 of Deuteronomy chapter 20, the Bible says that the Lord requires three things of a warrior before he can successfully take the field of war, battle. You want to fight. You want to conquer. These are the three things you need to bring into mind. The first thing has to do with what? A dedicated house. You need to dedicate your house. If you are going to battle, if you are going for war, you have a new house, you have a new land, you need to dedicate your house. The next thing the Lord is bringing to mind is that an enjoyed vineyard. You have a vineyard. Enjoy your vineyard. Whatever you have prepared for yourself, enjoy it. And the third one has to do with what? A consummated marriage. I am a soldier. I'm going for war. I'm going on peacekeeping. I am going for battle out there. I have this wonderful house that I have bought for myself. The Lord is saying I should dedicate that house to claim what? Ownership. I have a beautiful vineyard that I prepared for myself and my lovely wife. The Lord says I should enjoy it. I have a new bride. Oh, the minister said today you are husband and wife. So the honeymoon, the Bible says I should enjoy and consummate that marriage. As a warrior. And these are the lessons Deuteronomy is telling us to understand. Beloved, 
Hear the heart of our Lord be quenching you to union with him in every corner of your soul. As you read these verses in Deuteronomy, and these verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 through to 27, the Bible says, remember that you are God's house. Number one, soldier of the cross. You are the house of God. Minister of God, you are the house of God. Again, the Bible says, you are his vineyard. And most importantly, you are God's bride. You are the bride of God. The Lord loves you so much that among all these people, the planet Earth, nobody is loved like you because the Lord loves you. He longs to live richly in you and to partake of your life fully and to love you passionately. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know also that God is your dwelling place. God is your vineyard of life and love of your soul. He says, I love you. I am the love of your soul. And as he consumes, and as he loves, as he loves you more, more, you are then able to consume and love more of him. And out of this union is birthed the power of an what? Indestructible life. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many things the Lord expects us to do. As we come closer to him, we are to be dedicated. The Lord says the dedicated house speaks of our Lord's Lordship commitment. The Lord has committed himself to you that he wants to be your Lord. And this is a commitment that must charge out of our hearts and math at the dawn of every new day. So Joshua, at the end of his long life faithfulness, faithful service to God, so renewed his commitment. And when you read Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, the Bible says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord as a soldier. If you are not able to serve your master, as you are not able to serve the Lord who has called you, then you didn't know what you are doing. Definitely, you are out of the, bat the battle. But in Nehemiah chapter 12, we read of what? The walls of Jerusalem being dedicated with gladness and hymns of thanksgiving. The warrior must joyfully dedicate all that he is to all that God is. People of God, lovely ones, the Lord is saying you need to dedicate all that you have to all that God is. Before we count ourselves, as soldiers of the cross, as warriors in the hands of God, let us check our foundation for the marks of true dedication. These marks are the gladness, gladness, thanksgiving, and the zeal to follow the Lord of hosts wherever he may lead me. Since I have the gladness to follow the Lord, I will praise him and thank him because he's my God. And I will serve him with all the zeal, with all the enthusiasm, with all the vim and the vigor. People of God, the enjoyed vineyard also speaks of what? The continuous drawing of our strength from his holy presence within us. Jesus said in John chapter 15 verse 4, Abide in me 
and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. So the Lord is calling us. We need to abide in him in order to bear fruits. And we need to live in the vine where we can bear much fruits and the world will enjoy. As soldier of the cross, the Lord is challenging us. As David gorged himself on the Lord's presence, so he was able to stand against lions. He was able to stand against bears. He was able to stand against giants. He was able to stand against kings. The same vineyard David partook of is just a heart cry away for us. Those who would be daily warriors for Christ must first be daily partakers of Christ. You want to be a soldier for Christ. You want to be a warrior in the hands of God. You need to what? Walk daily with all that life you need to what? Put in place for the Lord every day. Seek right now with all of your desire to feast of his vine yard. The consummated marriage speaks of what the state of holy union and passion the Lord seeks with his warriors. People of God, my cherished viewers, this is more than abiding. It is high romance with our Lord. Wow! Why well, my Lord want to put me and embrace me and love me and do all. It is admittedly rare in occurrences. But it is in this moment of what? Mystical union that God impacts his seed of love anew into our hearts. A life will forever change after this encounter. When you come to him, when you have an affair with him, when you embrace him, oh, your life will never be the same. A man can dedicate his heart to his wife. People of God, he can also continually abide with her in devoted affection. But until they are one flesh, until they are one flesh, their relationship is not consummated. Their relationship is not consummated. So when you say I and my wife are one, there has been a consummation. I have married my wife and I have known her. The Hebrews say yada. There has been yada. If there's no yada, there's no what? Reunion. People of God. The Lord says that that is the relationship he is expecting from us. When the Lord consummates you, he knows you and you know him. Likewise, we who are the, the spiritual bride of our Lord Jesus Christ must ever cry. Songs of songs. Chapter 8 verse 3 says, Let his left hand be under my head, and his right hand embrace me. So when we are with the Lord, when he consumes us into his bosom, Oh, we remain with him. There's an attachment. It is in this burning intimacy that we know our Lord as Ish, which means my husband. The Lord is our husband. The Lord is our husband. He is our everything. Oh, Lord, let us know you this way now and this very moment. If you want him to be your husband, you need to know him. So the passage in Deuteronomy is clear. Before we can be warriors of God, or if we can be warriors for God, soldiers for Christ, we must be established as lovers of God. 
So take diligent heed to yourself. To love the Lord your God. Joshua chapter 23 verse 11. Purpose in your soul right now to draw your heart to God. Before you draw your sword for him. You are going for war and you are against your commander. There's no way you can win a battle. If you want to say, yes, sir, I do. Yes, sir, I obey your orders and your command. You should be willing to fight. And even to the point of what? Dying for your nation. So purpose in yourself, your soul right now to draw your heart to God before you draw your sword for him. Prepare for war. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, people of God, raiders shall raid you, but you shall raid at their heels. Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. There are raiders everywhere. There are people everywhere. Soldiers of the cross hear the bad news and the good news. The bad news says that there's a demonic host of raiders who want to destroy you. Every gold ten you are, and still every gold ten you have. These raiders have already robbed you. Thousands of times of joy. Thousands of times of love. Thousands of times of peace. Thousands of times of strength. Ladies and gentlemen, in place of these treasures, they have left you with depression. They have left you with fear. They have left you with fatigue and hardness of heart. But in the past, you have tasted the be beginnings of revival, breakthrough, and deliverance. But a short time later, a day of distress comes, and your last hit seems worse than your first. Oh, you have felt embarrassed at your inability to hold on to the treasures of God. Yes, you battle with developing a victim mentality where you begin to expect the raiders to steal whatever good God has given you. But in your warrior's heart, there is a yearning to stand and contend against the roller coaster spiritually. Believers of God, if that is your prayer, that means I want to stand, I want to roll against this thing that the, the devil has brought to me, then you can be an overcomer. The good news is that there is a combat blessing available. That enables the hunter to become a hunter. Oh, I hope you heard that. The good news is that there is a combat blessing available that enables the hunted to become a hunter. My prayer is that the Lord will help you to become a hunter in the hands of God. And this is the blessing bestowed on God by his father Jacob, quoted in Genesis chapter 49. When you read that chapter, this blessing drives the warrior of Jehovah to take back what has been stolen by these demonic raiders. They are raiders every day. An example of this blessing in action occurs in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Where David and his men returned to what? Zekla. And to find all their families and possessions carried off by the Amalekites. Now, upon David's inquiry, the Lord tells David to pursue. Today, the Lord is calling you. Today. The Lord says, my son, my daughter, my child, pursue. Pursue for you shall surely overtake them. And you shall surely rescue all. First Samuel chapter 30 verse 8. The Bible says that David pursued and found the raiders. 
In First Samuel chapter 30 verse 16, spread over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they have taken from the land of Judah. People of God, soldiers of the cross, warriors in God's hand, rise up from your slumber. The enemies are rejoicing with dance at the spoils they have robbed from you in the past. Whatever they have stolen, you can and must recover. It may be family relationships, friendships, oh, or spiritual gifts. Yes. It may be your possession. It may be your life. It may be everything that you have. But I tell you and challenge you. It may be passion, commitment, or even your ministry calling. It is time to pay attention to your heads. It is time to pay attention to your flocks. It is time to pay attention to your marriage. It is time to pay attention to your work. View the land and meditate on what good things God has given you. Before, but you are now missing from your life. Next, boldly ask God for the blessings of God. To recover every good thing Satan has stolen from you. Ladies and gentlemen, finally walk the determination to fulfill the blessing. For at its root, the blessings of God is a supernatural gift of God's determination to recover that which is lost. Let a chase begin this day. You need to chase the devil and say, yes, you have taken from me. But you lie. You lie. So far as my Lord lives, I will not let you go. I will fight to the end of my life. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 8, 14 through to 15. The Bible says, and from the Gadites, they came over to David in the stronghold in the wilderness. Mighty men trained for war who could handle shield and spear and horse oh, whose faces were like the faces of lions. The people who have been trained, they know all the weapons. They can use the MGs. They can use the M16. They can use all the mixiles, all the machine guns, all the rockets you could mention. They've painted their faces like lions. And they were as swift as what? Gazelle on the mountains. These people were warriors. And these of the sons of God were captains of the army. He who was least was equal to a hundred and the greatest to a thousand. And these are ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month. When it was overflowing all its banks, and they were put to fight all those in the valleys, both to the east and to the west. Ladies and gentlemen, the blessings of God produces mighty men, well able to pursue, well able to overtake, well able to plunder the enemy. So today, the Lord is charging you, the Lord is challenging you. The Lord is blessing you. So my cherished viewer, God expects soldiers who will say, I will not let you go unless you bless me. These are the soldiers God wants. God wants to teach his sons to fight. An early father will restore a young son to test his desire for victory. While well, the father can easily win the match at any time, the father will often allow the son to take the victory when he puts forth his best effort. Likewise, our Lord restores his beloved sons to test their desire for his blessings. 
people of God, Jacob's goal in resting for God was to lay hold of his blessing. Jacob won his struggle with, the, with God because his desire was wholehearted. We too can prevail with God if our desire satisfies his desire. God longs to bless his warriors with every spiritual blessing, but he only pours forth fullness on those who cry out to him from a heart of faith. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that may strongly support those hearts as completely his. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. It is when the Lord's eyes fixed their gaze on our heart condition that the wrestling match begins. Our natural strength, oh, which is in passage of what is presented by Jacob's tide, will eventually be dislocated. By the touch of God, the meaning is clear. Ladies and gentlemen, children of God, the Lord says no longer will you be able to make it through the day without the help of God. Once upon a time, you will sprint through the day using your own pride, desire, and ambition to fool. But now you will limp with God as your only road of support. The world will see that the Lord is on your side. Never, never let loose of your heart grip on the strong arm. Let every resting warrior take pause cry. I press on in order that I may lay hold of that which is laid hold by Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, until I come your way next week, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord support you. May he empower you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Aho! Ahoya!